In this video you're gonna learn how to play the great Django tune, Djangology. And it's the chords for the song that we're covering this time. So, let's dive into it. MandolinStudies.com My name is Magnus Sederlund and I'm really glad to share my mandolin studies with you. And this is a video in the series of three where we're covering the Django Reinhardt song Djangology. And in the second video today we're gonna cover the chords. And I learned this song from the great British guitarist guitarist called Robbie Nolan and I can really recommend you check him out he's a fantastic musician and a great teacher and let's kick off by I playing through the song and the chord changes with a backing track it's actually a Robbie Nolan trio that I'm playing with here and uh, yeah and then I break it down for you and explain a little bit one two three Yes, there's a couple of things going on there that I would like to explain to you. So first of all, it's it's the right hand thing going there because in for this kind of swing tune, I think it's the it's really good to have this rhythm, this ching chicka ding chicka ding chicka ding chicka ching chicka ding chicka ding chicka ding chicka. So you can first try strumming only on the muted strings like this. A one, two, three, four. Let's try doing it on the G G6 chord here. We've got ordinary G. This G6 I play like this. What I, you also can experiment with it's how for how long you hold the chord or if you're releasing it how I mean how percussive you want it to be or more harmonic if I want it to be very percussive it's like this and if I want more of the harmonic uh, vibe to it it's like this I hope you understand the difference that I'm trying to, to do there. The A part, it starts out with the A chord with the C sharp in the in the bottom, like this. And we have the same fingering for the G chord later on. You can try only that. And then there in between there's a it's like a C diminished chord 
So it's So from the A, from the A with the C in the bottom, one, two, three, four. And then go to A minor seven to D seven. Again, descending, now let me just show this last three chords there. The A, the A minor seven. So I guess it comes from this shape, the A. Maybe you're famili familiar with that. But I'm actually only playing like a three string chords all the way here. And uh, to, to explain it very shortly, it's like less is more when it comes to this kind of jazz chords. I think it's uh, very nice to find very smooth transitions for, to every chord. And, and using only the, the three strings, uh, it makes it work for me anyway. And uh, I guess a lot of other jazz mandolin players would think the same way. So it's like this. The A in the root. The 7 with the pinky. And then with the middle finger. Sounds very nice. Going to the D7 chord, you only it's only one note shifting there to G. And for the G chord, G chord, you can also use this G6. Ver, uh, version that I was playing like this. That will sound like this. And one thing I try, I tend to do. It's not nothing I really uh, thought of, but but I play first the ordinary G and then to the G six like this. I guess it's to keep the chord rhythm there because it changes at every bar. So let's do the whole A part once more. A one, two, three, four. And the chord for the B part, they are very simple. It's an A flat chord. Also here I continue playing three strings only. Going to A. So A flat. To A. Then we're back again, etc. You can also play it like this, like A flat to E flat seven, like you're going back and forth, like this. A. A, 
E7, A. So it's it's the same same thing happening there twice, but on two different frets. And then I take I the E flat seven would be. So it's in this inversion where the root is here. This is the E seven. Uh, sorry, E flat and the seven. Then you're back. Quite often when I play it, I don't mind this uh, seven chord coming in between. I, I play it like. So it's actually actually an uh, option you have there. I like I like using the metronome because we practice two things while we're doing it. First of all, we get to measure the tempo. And that can be quite good because if you want to play a song at a specific speed, you can start uh, slower and then finally in like increase it. And over time you will reach your target tempo. And the other thing we're practicing with the metronome is to actually keep the timing so that we don't fall off the meter somehow. So let's do it. I put it to 50 beats per minute and uh, I also think of it as the click is com coming from beat 2 and 4. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Dryer. E part. It's not that easy to play in a, that slow tempo, but I, it will anyway give you time to for the finger movements. So I think it's a good practice to do it. And in, then it actually gets a little bit easier when you speed it up a bit for the synchronization there. Yes, I think that's it for today's lesson. My question for you is, is there any other Django Reinhardt tune or some gypsy jazz tune that you would like to learn Please leave a comment below and I can collect some ideas for some upcoming videos Thank you so much for watching and if you like the video, please hit the like button and Also, you, you might want to subscribe to my channel because I have new videos like this coming out every week now and I'm sorry about the reverb in this lesson because I forgot to switch it off. So some of my speaking will be with the reverb. But hey, I think you get the point anyway. Thanks for watching and um, yeah, keep swinging that mandolin. Bye.